Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about how to predict PaCO2 with entitled CO2. So let's take an example. You place a patient on the ventilator with these settings, get an ABG and your pH is 7.36, PaCO2 is 55. So you make some adjustment to the ventilator, increase the respiratory rate to 24, repeat an ABG and PaCO2 looks almost similar. But in 30 minutes, you get call from the nursing that patient is more agitated and is now more hypoxemic. And usual response would be to repeat a blood gas to see where the patient is. But could you have done something different in this case? Could you have predicted your PSU2 without getting a new ABG and trying to figure out other things going on with your patients? This is what we'll be talking about in this lecture. ABG provides quite a lot of information like ventilation, oxygen content and acid-based disturbance. However, if you don't have ABG, there are a lot of other data points available for you to make better judgment calls. So the best way to figure out PSU2 without blood gas is to look at your capnogram. Most of the ventilators have volumetric capnography inbuilt into them. So make sure that you turn it on. In a normal person, there is no alveolar dead space. So your P arterial CO2 is going to be equal to enteral CO2. However, this is not in case if you have alveolar dead space. And this can be seen because of two reasons decreased perfusion or increased airway resistance. And in these cases, your PaCO2 will be more than entitled CO2 and the magnitude of the difference will depend upon the magnitude of the dead space present. You can figure out the amount of alveolar dead space by subtracting your entitled from arterial CO2, dividing it by P arterial CO2. You can use alveolar dead space in your calculation instead of total dead space as your anatomical dead space should be constant. Calculating dead space can be a little bit trickier if you have got sloping waveform such as seen in obstructive diseases. Please watch my video on how to calculate dead space fraction in these cases. Since it's difficult to differentiate a normal capnogram from dead space from homogeneous emptying, you need at least one baseline ABG. And once you have done that, make sure that you look at the PaCO2 from ABG and entitled from the vent and calculate alveolar dead space fraction. And this will help you follow up the future changes in patient's dead space. Following entitled CO2 is very important on patients on ventilator and most of the ventilator have these features inbuilt into them. If you are decreasing entitled CO2, look at the waveform of your capnography and you can see two patterns. First, you can have similar looking capnogram with similar slope of phase 2 and similar angle alpha. And this means that there is increased alveolar ventilation and this can come either from your patients breathing faster or you making your patient breathe faster. If your patient is breathing faster by his own, figure out why your patient is breathing fast and treat it. And if you are causing patient to hyperventilate, slow down the respiratory rates. In these cases, your P arterial CO2 will be equal to your entitled CO2. However, there's an exception. Your capnogram may look similar with lower entitles if you've got worsening pulmonary perfusion. That means you're developing alveolar dead space. So if your entitled has dropped significantly and if the slope of phase 2 and angle has not changed and you ruled out increased alveolar ventilation, this would be observed if your patient is unable to mount respiratory response, for example, if he's deeply sedated or paralyzed. That would mean the perfusion to the lungs has dropped and this may suggest acute pulmonary embolism in correct settings. Other reasons would be things like microthrombi as seen in inflammation or hypotension and decreased cardiac output. Understand that this represents decreased pulmonary perfusion and acute PE is just one of the causes for decreasing pulmonary perfusion. So don't go performing CT angiogram on everyone because your entitled have dropped. If you see the new capnogram with less steep slope of phase 2, increased angle alpha and decreasing alveolar plateau, this would mean that patient is having increased dead space ventilation from airway obstruction. And you can also look at your peak minus plateau pressures where the difference will be increased, suggestive of increased resistance in the circuit. In these cases, your P arterial CO2 will be more than entitled CO2. In these cases, since you do not know where your P arterial CO2 is, you may have to repeat your blood gas if you want to know your PaCO2 accurately. If your entitles are increasing and your capnogram looks similar, that would mean you have decreased alveolar ventilation. And in these cases, your PaCO2 will be close to entitled CO2. This is seen if you have decreased the respiratory rates or tidal volumes. Understand that in control modes on the ventilator, patient cannot breathe slower than the respiratory rate that you put them on. 
look for other causes for respiratory acidosis. One of the things that you have to remember that if you put somebody on pressure assist control mode and there's a change in compliance or resistance, your tidal volumes drops and therefore your minute ventilation will drop and that can increase your antidal CO2. Sometimes your increasing antidal CO2 can also be seen in recirculation of carbon dioxide such as in leaky expiratory well or error in measurements if there is water in the circuit. And you can figure it out easily as your slope of your phase 4 will be much gentler and your capnogram will not reach baseline. If you see lower slope of phase 2 increase angle alpha, this would again mean increase dead space ventilation from airway obstruction and your interpretation will be similar. In these patients, your P arterial CO2 will be more than antidal CO2 and you may have to repeat an ABG to know your real PA CO2. So how do you interpret changes in your antidal CO2? If your antidal CO2 rises, that means you have decreased alveolar ventilation and if it drops, that means you have increased alveolar ventilation. In these cases, the shape of your capnogram will not change. Change in antidal CO2 can also be seen in increased dead space ventilation and in these cases, you will see decreased slope of phase 2, increased angle alpha and absence of plateau in phase 3. These all would suggest that there is increased sign of obstruction. Improvement in your dead space ventilation can also change your antidal CO2 and in these cases you will see your capnogram improving and your phase 2 becomes more vertical, your alpha drops and you will see more horizontal phase 3. So if your capnogram remains changed, your P arterial CO2 will be similar to your antidal CO2. If you have increasing dead space, your P arterial CO2 will be higher than the antidal CO2 and if you have got improving capnogram, that means your PaCO2 will be coming very near to your antidal CO2. Whenever you see changes in antidal CO2, always look at your peak and plateau pressures. So if your antidals are rising or dropping because of change in ventilation, you will see that your peak minus plateau does not change. If you have increased dead space ventilation, that means there is increasing obstruction. And that would increase your peak minus plateau pressures. You can also check for auto peep in these patients. If your dead space is decreasing or your obstruction is decreasing, you will see peak minus plateau coming down. So coming back to the case, whenever you get the ABG, look at your antidals. In this case, your antidal CO2 was 40 and you perform an inspiratory pause and look at peak minus plateau pressures and in this case, it's 8. You calculate the alveolar dead space fraction, which is about 30%. This looked pretty good ABG to me. However, if you went ahead and changed the respiratory rate to 24 and repeated the ABG, you again look at your capnogram and you will notice that your antidal CO2 has fallen to 35 and you can see the slope of phase 2 is now low, angle has increased and the plateau phase 3 is gone. So whatever changes that you made must have worsened your alveolar dead space. If you look at your peak minus plateau pressures, they are now 14 instead of 8. So the obstruction is worse and you start noticing auto peep. And if you calculate your alveolar dead space fraction, it is now 45%. So when the nurse calls you in the next 30 minutes with increasing agitation and worsening oxygen requirement, you already know that this is because of worsening air trapping, which has resulted in increased work of breathing and that's what resulting in agitation. That's why your patient is hypoxemic. So you go ahead and drop the rate to 18, look at your capnogram, antidals and peak and plateau pressures and you see that your slope of phase 2 is now better. Antidal is 42 and your peak minus plateau has decreased. You really don't have to get another ABG at this stage. You already have figured out the underlying problem. Your PACO2 should be around 55 as was in the first ABG. Use your antidals to follow PACO2 without a new blood gas. If you have a stable antidal, you don't have to get a new blood gas unless there are changes in lung mechanics or patient condition. And if there are changes, look at your waveform in your volumetric capnogram. Check lung mechanics using peak and plateau pressures. And if you need ABG, get one. Say for example, in this case, your antidals have risen and you repeat an ABG, you see that there is no difference between PA and antidal. That means your increased antidal is due to decreased alveolar ventilation. If you see that there is a gap between the P arterial CO2 and antidal CO2, that means there is increased dead space ventilation. In summary, always get a blood gas after you place the patient on ventilator. This is your baseline and look at your capnogram and lung mechanics when you look at this ABG. Calculate the alveolar dead space if present. If there is no alveolar dead space, your P arterial CO2 will be equal to your antidal CO2.
you should always monitor volumetric antidals while on the ventilator. And if antidal changes, look at your lung mechanics and check ABG if required. If your ABG shows similar P arterial and antidal CO2 gradient, that means there are only changes in alveolar ventilation that are causing these problems. And if you see increased P arterial CO2 and antidal CO2 gradient, that means there is increased dead space. Since there are a lot of moving parts in assumption, you have to understand them pretty well. For the beginners, go ahead and get a blood gas, but also look at the other parameters and don't look at your ABG alone. Slowly with time, you'll get better and you'll find it much easier to interpret these changes in antidal CO2. Bottom line, don't look at the ABG in isolation. Always look at it along with your capnogram and lung mechanics. So following antidal CO2 is one of the ways of figuring out P arterial CO2 and other lung pathologies. However, there are more tricks that you can do apart from monitoring antidal and we'll talk about that in the next lecture. So stay tuned. Thank you.